Quantum just made a major announcement yesterday about advancing and creating your first generation quantum random number gen generator microchip. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you tell us? Can you tell us a little bit about this, please? Yes, of course. So yes, it was actually um, a very important milestone for us because um, um, we created already about uh, a year and a half ago. I mean, our first, uh, I would say, working prototype. Uh, what we call our foundation, uh, you know, technology. And um, with that, we are creating several iterations, you know, several possible devices that will contain the same um, characteristic, you know, I mean, basically creating that source of uh, entropy um, that comes, you know, from uh, quantum uh, mechanics. And that source of entropy, just to remind everybody, is a very important, you know, was, you know, crucial to make uh, the encryption of a very high quality. So, um, so in in that perspective, you know, I think uh, now the possibility to miniaturize, in fact, our technology is this is actually what the microchip does, basically without you know we compromise any functionality and any even throughput you know and um, i would say uh, eff efficiency of the technology you're able uh, basically to have uh, the, the the basically our device now uh, on the size of a an, basically a nail this is what uh, you know it's about a 1 centimeter square um, you know i mean uh, big as big you know and so it is uh, uh, for us actually it means that you could be able to, later on, you know, I mean, to put our uh, technology basically in anything that is connected to the internet in one way or another. So, and and the purpose for that, obviously, of doing that, it's actually to um, our microchip would participate to create an an encryption and a cybersecurity basically. Um, uh, defense that uh, would uh, allow most of these uh, product containing that microchip to become um, unhackable or at least extremely difficult to hack. Well, I'm certain that most of our audience understands what a microchip is, but they may want you to dumb down what a quantum random number generator is and how a company can use that to protect themselves. So, I mean, when you look at uh, how everything is, uh, I mean, any communication over the internet, you know, or any communication in general has to be scrambled, you know, if you, if you want that uh, no third party able to read or interfere with your, the content of your message. So encryption exists uh, for a long, long, long time. Um, and, and and without getting too you know technical here, because it can become extremely technical. When particularly when you talk about behind, the, there is a science of encryption called cryptography, and that could be extremely complicated. So without getting too technical, um, what is important is that the way you seed or you start, in fact, uh, encryption uh, depends very much on the randomness of the architecture of that encryption. Basically, it is well recognized that the most random, in fact, uh, your, your encryption is, the better it's going to be, uh, or the most difficult it to be for a third party actually to guess what is the sequence or not into your encryption. And that would prevent, in fact, the, the third party to be able to guess what is the the, basically the, the encryption pattern and uh, if they're able to do that they're able to predict what's going to the the future of your message and decrypt the message so having a high randomness basically um, prevent you know that uh, these to happen so what do we do here is that okay well why don't you use a randomness well Pure randomness is impossible to obtain in our in our world you know the world we live today uh, it's called classical physics. There is nothing random, pure random. You know, there is a lot of uh, complex phenomenon, but there is no pure random numbers or number or pure random phenomenon. If you wanted to obtain a pure source of randomness, you have to rely on quantum physics. 
And this is why, the reason why there is a connection now with the, the quantum, uh, te quantum technology and the quantum uh, revolution. It's to obtain that, uh, in fact, that source of pure randomness. So we do that. In fact, we, it's an invention that was done at the University of Sherbrooke by a professor, you know, a world-renowned specialist in uh, quantum noise. And what you do basically is using the property of quantum particles that are at the same time, they are a, a particle with a mass and at the same time, they can behave like a wave. How they behave like a wave or as a, as a particle is a completely random phenomenon. So you exploit that to create basically a stream of electrons of the current, you know, I mean, that's what, that's the reason why quantum, the name of the company is called quantum emotion. It's due to the motion of electrons, okay? And obtaining that, basically you can create a, a current of electrons that are completely time, you know, independent. So that means that uh, you can, that signal can be after that transform in the device into a source of pure random bits. That's what they call it. I'm sorry to be a little bit too technical, but there is very difficult to explain that without getting it to a little bit technical. I, I, I then want to ask you, uh, we really enjoyed your presentation at uh, yesterday's investor talk. And um, some of our investors were interested in how the larger corporations, the Intels out there, would they not be able to create an AI-driven, uh, quantum-directed code, you know, breaker for all intents purposes to counter? I mean, how can a small company provide such an incredibly competitive uh, way for well, we, cybersecurity? We are, first of all, I mean, the research on uh, QRNGs and everything exists uh, already for a while. So there are companies out there. We're not the only one. You know, I mean, uh, that doing that. However, uh, the majority of the, these companies are using another, I would say, source of, uh, uh, I mean, they're using another quantum particle. It's called a photon to actually generate it the same, basically, randomness. So our, so our difference here is like we're using electrons and we're pretty much the, you know, the, the only ones who at least we have you are the only ones who have the, the original patents on that, okay? So, and we believe that, um, you know, our approach is way, uh, I would say, very robust. It's uh, very, I would say, um, efficient, you know, and provides actually, a, a, you know, a source of randomness that it's extremely, uh, you know, producing a randomness at high speed. And ultimately, it's uh, extremely, I would say, also cheap to produce. So, and since elect it's electronics, electrons, you know, it uh, embeds, you know, seamlessly, you know, with the, the, the other electronics. So we have a technology that actually is uh, superior, I think, uh, to the competition in many ways. So how does the incorporation of this QRNG technology into a microchip, microchip represent a pivotal advancement in quantum communication technology? Because at the same time, now that it allows actually to, um, you know, bring that, uh, you know, basically technology to almost everything connected to the internet. You know, I mean, any device, you know, I mean, because now you're a lot of device um, will need to be also self-sufficient when it comes to security because attacks sometimes are so fast. For example, one of the big markets uh, for the technology down the road would be, uh, you know, the self-driving cars, you know. And, the, in the, you know, we, we expecting at some point, you know, that when the, that the technology or that cars will be ready, that uh, will have actually on the roads a lot of cars will driving themselves without having a driver you know i mean it will and they will be driven by gps it's already exists you know but it's still not mainstream and um, and in the future the, so how do you prevent uh, somebody to attack or actually hack a car actually there are already movies sci-fi movies that actually you could see 
in fact, uh, cars, you know, the, you know, uh, electric cars that actually hacked, you know, and basically they're starting to, to create havoc on the streets, you know, because basically they're out of control. So uh, how do you prevent that? You know, this is going to be a big challenge because, um, you know, to be able to do that, the, the security systems in the cars will have to be almost uh, independent, you know, so of uh, external, you know, any input. So you need to start to create now systems that are going to be in terms of security self-sufficient and the source of randomness to create, for example, a, a very high, you know, security encryption. In that case, we'll need actually uh, technologies like the microchip to be able to be efficient in responding to an attack. They'll have to be a respond to in uh, milliseconds, you know, to prevent actually these attacks. So right now, what's yeah. your initial line of sales that you can use with the quantum random number generator microchip? Uh, first of all, we still, I mean, if you if you read the, you know, the, the press release, you know, we, we have the chip, we still need to do a, a run, you know, I mean, we're expecting actually the, the finding because we had, had to do a few uh, changes, uh, you know, I mean, uh, improvements, you know, on the chip, you know. Uh, but it's pretty trivial though, so that should not be an issue. We should expect actually by next fall to have the fully functional uh, you know, chip. So once we have that, I think our first, uh, for us, you know, the, I said, I think I said uh, in the previous uh, interviews that we had, that we focus very much on uh, healthcare, for example, who is a, it's a huge, uh, it's a huge market, you know, not very well served, served in terms of uh, cyber security. Um, and on top of that, it's a market where whoever supplies a solution, healthcare is responsible for the security. And, and security is becoming actually integrated as part of the quality of the product. So medical device, for example, uh, you know, there almost uh, every new medical device is one way or another connected to the internet. So it is extremely important, you know, to to have uh, the you know the top notch uh, security technology uh, to prevent actually that uh, patients, you know, uh, suffer an attack, you know, from um, from hackers. Uh, there's been so many. Give you a few examples that are actually already, you know, famous. Famous in in the, I think it happens in the United States several times. There's been. Uh, people that had uh, these new, uh, for example, pacemakers that are connected, uh, you know, with with the internet, you know, for for better monitoring, etc. Well, they've been hacked. You know, imagine if you receive a message, you know, saying, "Oh, if you don't send these, you know, numbers of dollars or Bitcoin uh, to, you know, by tomorrow." Uh, will turn off your pacemaker. So I don't think you're going to spend a nice, uh, you know, a very good night, you know, that, at that moment, you know. I mean, this is obviously very dramatic, but, I mean, uh, these situations can, can, can happen actually more and more in the future. And let's not forget that why we're interested in healthcare is that it's the number one or at least the, one of the top assets that the hackers are, are going after. It is a very lucrative for them actually to sell, to steal, to resell, or actually patient healthcare uh, data. So, uh, how long after the adjustments and enhancements are made uh, with you know your prototype and your prototype testing before it can actually make it to market? What kind of timeline are we looking at? I mean, uh, we, it should happen uh, in, by the end of the by the end of the year. You know, I mean, obviously, um, you know, we're not manufacturing ourselves uh, medical device, etc. So we'll need to to find, you know, obviously partners, you know, partnerships, you know, with manufacturers that want to integrate their their chip into their system uh, of uh, security for a medical device, for example. So. We we're not selling the medical device. We're just selling, and you know, an important element of their security. How are you protected for patents and licensing right now? We have a four 
patents that have been uh, granted by the, the U.S. office, for example, with the main uh, actually uh, institution, you know, that uh, for intellectual property. So, and we are continuing in building our intellectual property. So it's, you know, we, we, we not like most, I mean, uh, in, because, I mean, you actually understand that our inventions are physical, you know, I mean, it's very difficult, uh, as you know, to, to create a very strong IP if you only have, um, a, you know, what's a software solutions, like most, most people, most of uh, the industry in, um, in cybersecurity, it's all about software. It's very difficult. You know, we have that strength that uh, our foundation IP is connected to physical device and physical phenomenon. So that's what we protected. So it's very strong. Well, we've touched on how you can enhance protection for high value assets like self-driving cars and critical systems, obviously yeah, there's yeah. nothing higher, uh, more important than our healthcare systems. But if somebody wants to get in touch with you to discuss uh, other applications, can they just reach out to you uh, via well, yeah. your website, Francis, or is there another Absolutely. way? Absolutely, that... we have uh, all the information is available in our website, you know, and, uh, you know, they can, uh, they can reach me very easily and I, I will always respond to them. And of course, you talked about a timeline, which I consider for incredibly aggressive and exciting. We well, by yeah. end of this year. Um, uh, can you tell us what other uh, shareholder updates we should be looking forward to in the first or second quarter here for 2024? Uh, yes, we 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 actually right now we in discussions with the uh, you know potential partners you know and um, you know and hopefully. You know, we'll be able to announce at some point, you know, these uh, collaborations, you know, and I think um, that could uh, hopefully that will be pleasing the shareholders and uh, on the future, maybe investors in the company. Well, as always, Francis, thank you so much for the update. It's very exciting and always reminds me of a good science fiction thriller when I get off uh, any interview with you. So uh, we appreciate the update. And for everybody out there looking for more information, please go to the Quantum emotion website listed below. Thank you. My pleasure. Bye-bye.